All right, welcome to the May 13th select board meeting. We are still here at the middle school uh, because this is a pre-town meeting meeting. Um, we have a number of things on our agenda tonight, but the folks who are here to talk to us about those things are actually here at the moment. So we're gonna get started on a couple of other items. Um, one of them I'd like to get out of the way is um, we always talk about whether or not we need to meet on Wednesday at the Monday meeting. Um, John would like to have an executive session. We've got to get that posted as an executive session really quickly, um, but we can do that. Um, so to have a brief executive session in advance of the um, uh, Wednesday's town meeting session. So are folks okay if we meet at six o'clock that night? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. All right. We got to check into that executive <laughs> session, yeah. session situation, actually. Okay. <clears throat> so we need to make an announcement. Correct. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Other things we'll do quickly is uh, we need to sign the June 25th, 2013 special state election warrant. I forgot to look at the motion sheet. It seems to me we don't have to vote on this. We just announce it which is what we always do. Yes, that is true. So make sure you don't leave without signing the state election warrant. Uh, and we have a couple of parking and street closure requests, or just one, I guess. Ms. Stein, would you like to? Sure, um, start with, um, okay. I move that the select board approve the following street closing slash parking request from the Amherst Area Chamber of Commerce for the annual Taste of Amherst event. Place no parking bags on parking meters around the perimeter of the town common, including the north and south sides of the Spring Street lot beginning Thursday, June 13th, from noon to 9 p.m., Friday, June 14th, 2013, from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m., Saturday, June 15th, 2013, note the change, from noon to 10 p.m. and Sunday, June 16th, 2013, note the change, noon to 4 p.m. to accommodate case vendor parking. Second. Further discussion, Ms. Brewer. Oh, and I didn't quite finish. Oh, I yeah. realized there's another bullet point. Oh, Close yeah, Boltwood that. Avenue between Spring Street and <coughs> Route 9 on Friday, June 14th, 2013, and Saturday, June 15th, 2013, from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., peak pedestrian crossing times for the beer and wine tasting. Second. Further discussion. Ms. I Brooke. guess it's as much of a comment as a question, but I'm assuming based on the cut and paste from last year, et cetera, that um, the coordination will take place between the taste parking and the farmer's market parking, like it always does on yes. Saturday. And it will all magically just work out. Further <laughs> well, discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And might as well do the liquor license. Also. Sure. I move that the select board approve a special all alcoholic license to K Ride Incorporated for a charity family bike ride and walkathon to be held from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, June 1st, 2013, and from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m., June 2nd, 2013, on the Hampshire College grounds, 893 West Street, Amherst, Stephen D. Stark, Treasurer. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry, I did also have a question about the, going back to the taste for a moment. Um, the comment that they made in terms of suspension of food truck vendors on the South Common location, since this is in our packet, et cetera, I just thought it, we should touch base on what was actually happening with that. Oh, thank you. Um, so is that the same parking that we've given them? Um, I didn't even look at that. I don't know, and I'm guessing that even if it wasn't, that they would not want a food truck on the, on the Common if they possibly could just like other events, right. wish they wouldn't have if, food if trucks. They, if they, yeah, get that. if we have been, uh, if we've given them those parking spaces, then that's we a non-issue. Because it's, it's on given. South Pleasant Street. Okay, so they don't. So they they're asking that the one vendor that normally parks on South Pleasant Street not park there to compete with the taste. I don't know how we would enforce that, Ms. Musanti. Like they should have asked for that parking if they wanted that. You know, it's kind saying. of under their control. If uh -huh. just like 
you can't do another event on the common while the, while the taste has it. Right. They kind of take control of that. I'm not sure what we do about things that are not happening um, in space that they've reserved. Because we haven't made any provision in our, in our food truck regulations that says, except in the case of special events when we might decide to tell you to go somewhere else. Right. Which doesn't mean we couldn't, in theory, do that. I just didn't know if the bid had already had a conversation with you or the town manager about this. No, I didn't no. even notice that, no. So that was in our packet? But I didn't it was know. in their letter. I didn't even notice that. Um, so the answer, I think we should just tell them officially then that the answer is no. <laughs> so that they don't yet, think it's yes it and they go and tell the person not to park there. Right. I um, that. So well, we've got plenty of time to just consider okay. this at another right. time. <laughs> My brain is a little bit yeah. full of town meeting stuff to think about this, but it's a good point. So I, I think okay. I'd rather put off a consideration of that question. Mm -hmm. I'm fine strange. with that. I would just like the staff that when, when staff tells them that they have the parking to tell them <coughs> they don't know the answer to the other part yet. Yes. So they Noted. don't make an assumption one way or the other. Very good. All right. Okay. All right. So those are the untimed items we need to take care of. All right. So we're going to get started then on our six o'clock item, which is voting and assigning selected positions on town meeting warrant articles. Not everyone is here who I was thinking might be here for this discussion, but we don't have that much time, so we're going to get started. Um, to uh, recap, the select board considered had an initial consideration of Article 42 a couple of weeks ago. We decided at that time uh, that we needed more information because at that time Housing and Sheltering Committee was still in the process of considering it and was going to come up with a recommendation on it, which they have done. We have a very uh, clear and excellent memo from Housing and Sheltering Committee in our packets. Um, so there's that. We also received uh, opinion from town council about what the passage of Article 42 would or would not compel the town to do. Um, and in a nutshell, it would not compel the town to necessarily do <coughs> anything. It would enable pursuit of, of anything should we uh, decide to move forward with it. But it, for sort of the, the basic reason that the legislative branch of government um, can't control, can't compel, is not, does have no, has no authority over the executive branch of government. Um, there's, there's not actually a, a compelling, compelling in the verb sense, um, result from the passage of the article. So, and in part, that is the reason behind, <coughs> that's some of the reasoning behind the Housing and Sheltering Committee's recommendation, um, which we'll talk about in a minute. But anyway, so there's that. Um, so we have the recommendation from Housing and Sheltering Committee. Uh, we've got town council's opinion, and then we have Mr. Musanti uh, having met with some folks the other day, and Mr. Zomek that we will hear about also. So um, first, I guess I would ask Mr. Stutzman from Housing and Sheltering Committee, would you like to summarize your memo to us, or just assume that we've all read it, or yeah, add any information? actually have any new information since the memo was sent. So essentially, as the memo says, the committee had uh, kind of a nuanced position on it. We had a lot of concerns about potential legal repercussions and kind of lack of specificity in the article, but in general, the community supported it in principle and it forwards, forwards the cause of affordable housing in town. And like you just said, uh, town council's opinion that it would not compel the town to do anything, but it could open the door to a course of action was pretty much the reason for the committee endorsing it. Okay, thank you. Questions or comments from the select board on the Housing and Sheltering Committee's recommendation? Ms. Brewer. Um, I appreciated the memo's de level of detail because I was at most of these meetings and they managed to capture like so much <coughs> of that. So thank you because a lot, a lot was discussed during those meetings. Um, and one of the things that I found particularly compelling as I listened to these ongoing discussions and then as pointed out here in the memo is although I had first come to this with the idea of a concern of trying to figure out in my head how to protect this set of tenants versus any other set of tenants versus someone who's losing their home versus this, that, or the other thing. Um, the idea of increasing at a, at a relatively low cost to us, increasing our um, inventory of affordable units became clearer as being a, a goal of this as well. So those, like, those many discussions I think were valuable in terms of talking about the different aspects. Thank you. Other questions or comments for the uh, for Mr. Stutzman for the Housing and Shelter and Committee's recommendation? Okay, so Mr. Musanti, why don't you tell us about the meetings you had on Friday, who they were with, what, how that went? Sure, and I also was able to attend the Housing and Sheltering Committee, and Greg, Greg and the committee captured it well in their summary memo. Um, 
Subsequent to that, uh, met on Friday with uh, Greg was there, uh, Dave Zomek, uh, uh, representatives from the Housing Authority, Mass Housing Partnership. Um, it was a good group, and we really tried to get into the uh, uh, nitty gritty of what what the issues are surrounding preserving affordability at Echo Village apartments, uh, and what are, what among the many options that are laid out in the in the proposed article, what are the ones that might have the most uh, promise? And it was a good discussion, and it's really at the beginning now of a, what our mass housing and, and uh, uh, council suggests would is likely to be a good 12 to 18 month process, uh, both on the uh, uh, potential uh, eviction relocation scenarios as well as putting together viable uh, potential uh, funding sources and also assuming some cooperation from the current owner. Um, some of the funding areas that we think have the most promise uh, at uh, state and federal level low-income housing tax credits. Uh, affordable Housing Trust Fund, um, um, locally looking potentially at uh, Community Preservation Act or even CDBG funds for a part of this, uh, and how might our, if there was a local match of some sort in the end, end result, how that might be structured. So it was a very good discussion. Uh, we're going to get some technical assistance from the Mass Housing Partnership about financial feasibility. Tracy Lee has just come in. Oh, good. Perfect segue. And, uh, and so that was good. Um, on the heels of that request from town council uh, and offered to the uh, petitioners um, that we take make an attempt at trying to translate the article into a prospective draft uh, motion, which I've handed out, uh, handed out to you, and here's some extra copies um, that uh, wanted to walk you through briefly. And it basically attempts to capture what the thrust of the Housing and Sheltering Committee uh, recommendations were, which is uh, um, it, it keeps the use of eminent domain as one of the acquisition tools. Uh, um, because there's no legally, according to council, no legally uh, feasible way of saying friendly versus unfriendly taking. Um, that can clearly be explained, and we could explain that if, this, if there was to be an affirmative motion, motion uh, that it, it's, the, it's, the, it's the view of the Housing and Sheltering Committee, and one that I share, that if in fact eminent domain becomes part of this, that we, we do so in, in uh, you know, coordinated effort with the owner and ideally with, with his uh, cooperation. Um, purchase price was adjusted to what the current estimated value is of the residential units, because there's two, two, par two buildings on the property, commercial and residential. That's two and a half million. Uh, and then there's language in there in addition to acquisition, it also gives the select board authority and or uh, acquiring an affordability restriction, which would, you know, like the entire, if, if such an article were to pass, that would, all of it requires a negotiation, but it would give you that flexibility in a negotiation to include an affordable uh, affordability restriction. So it's not my motion, it's not the, the town's motion, this is a draft, and that was what I promised the petitioner we'd come up with a draft, so so there it is. <laughs> and uh, so I think that's where we're at. Okay, um, questions or comments from Mr. Musanti? His meetings and the motion is presented. Um, so can you, the, <clears throat> your meetings with these folks, did it change your sense of the timeline at all? Uh, no, I think it provided more clarity about what the action steps are within the timeline, but um, and Greg or Dave might help Amy. 12 to 18 months was talked about in, 
And there were some people at that meeting who thought even that timeline was, what's the right way to describe it? Aggressive, maybe maybe too too fast, given all the all the steps that need need to go through. But it was more of a reality check, I think, on the timeline. But it's not by next Friday kind of thing. And so, in that time, these folks would not be um, would not need to relocate out of the apartments. Well, there's a parallel. Uh, set of actions being taken by the owner that has its own legal process to it relating to tenant notification and eviction and so uh, that's kind of happening over here but it's certainly affected by this and would certainly uh, could influence our conversation <coughs> with the owner about what happens in the interim. Ms. Burr. So town meetings approval of this just as we've talked about town council's opinion on um, they, you know, that it doesn't compel a particular action, but enables us to pursue basically all these actions and see which ones fit. Um, mm -hmm. By town meeting approving this, that does not have, you know, in, in the technical sense, any effect on whether or not these tenants themselves might choose to move out or are first to move out through the eviction process. It influences the conversation we have with the owner which may cause the owner at some point to do something different associated with the eviction process. But that's like, like you say, that's a parallel track. Right. So simply passing this does not mean that, oh, of course, that means the owner will stop the eviction process, or oh, of course, everyone will stay in, through the, out, the process. Obviously, some people will choose to find housing elsewhere so as not to remain in that limbo. And, right. and, and that would be their decision, obviously, to make. Right. So whether or not we have the same residence at the time, we would work through our power parallel process on the purchase, potential purchase, yeah. it, it's not entirely clear. Other questions or comments? Select board. Um, so is, from your meeting, did you get any sense of whether this needs to be, what the benefits are of acting on this now versus waiting until the fall? Um, and I'm eager for any uh, additional feedback from those at that meeting. Uh, I think, quite frankly, a town meeting adoption of an article could be helpful. Um, in and of itself, it, that doesn't, without the article, that doesn't prevent the town from pursuing all of these uh, um, approaches uh, with the current owner and, and other other potential partners, but um, it certainly would have a sense of town meeting and the sense of the town behind that, you know, and uh, uh, may in fact require a future town meeting action depending on the specific structure of a deal, especially if it deviates from this broadly worded draft motion that's that's before you. So, um, I don't know, Dave? You know, I, I could add a, a comment or two, and maybe Greg. Um, so, I think what, I've been attended a couple of meetings with the town manager, and I think a couple of things have, have come uh, become clear. One is that, um, first and foremost, um, we, we want to talk as the, uh, as often as possible about uh, willing seller and, and uh, friendly actions here. And, and our initial conversations with Mr. Chawadi have, have been very open uh, to listening and, and dialoguing. And I think that's hugely important. Um, secondly, I think Mr. Mizanti made it very clear at this meeting that, that uh, I attended last Friday that um, whether this article moves forward now or a similar article in the fall, he's you know he's committed to uh, committed staff time to work with the uh, the folks around the table um, to explore this fully to do our due diligence to do some feasibility work. Um, I, I guess I share his um, perspective that uh, there are some advantages to it moving forward now. Although, as you just noted moments ago, it doesn't compel the town to do anything. Um, uh, 
Mr. Stutzman, do you want yeah, to Yeah, so we were talking about time frames. I think really there's two time frames here. You know, reference that we made the two parallel tracks. And I think the two tracks really are the time frame for a possible acquisition of the property and the time frame in which tenants who are there now may have to leave some point in the future. And although some reference was given by the petitioners and by the council, I believe they're working with from community legal aid, there's a chance that some of the tenants or all the tenants who are facing eviction now could be there as long as fall of next year. A real sense of certainty around that has been conveyed. Um, so to address the question of why act now rather than in fall, I might turn to the other track, which is the, um, although we call it the preservation of the affordable units, these were not in fact affordable in the subsidized inventory sense, but really looking at production of affordable units, and the town just completed its housing production plan, and were the entirety of these units to be preserved, all 24, as the memo states, that would represent half of the town's goal for affordable housing production. And at the price per unit that is presupposed by the number mentioned in the article, that would be a steal. So that's one reason to consider acting on it now, consider putting into place the funding for an acquisition. So what would the end result of this look like? So now we're, we're 18 months or wherever down the road. What, what, is, what is the finality of this in a perfect world? Um, we don't know for sure. I mean, the petitioners and then in our own uh, meetings, there's been kind of a laundry list of prospective possible sources. So it's, if there's acquisition, what, what does that mean? Acquiring the property? Uh, uh, is there, you know, a deal to be struck with the current owner? Is there an affordability restriction that's acquired, you know, in exchange for you know, some public funds that are, are requested. So we don't know yet. We don't know yet. Um, this article, if adopted, would certainly give the town the, and the select board the authority to pursue, you know, those with, with multiple funding sources, including a heavy reliance on outside grants and, and, and gifts. Questions or comments from select? Ms. Brewer. I wonder if um, someone could just speak very, very briefly. I realize we don't have much time. But one, I, I just wanted to clarify for all those wonderful people watching us out in the world as well. When we talk about the eviction process taking this long, it's not because, and, and I'm trying to be thoughtful about the way I phrase this, but I mean, I don't want anybody to have to move out of their home, obviously. But the eviction process does not take this long because the tenants actually have a reason to not be evicted. They, you know, the reason for eviction is you don't want to pay the rent that I want to charge you. And that just takes a long time in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts as opposed to there's some other underlying reason here that the eviction process takes a long time, correct? It's yep. just the way that the, the hoops, the barriers go, okay. Mr. Aiden. So, as I am taking a, a little bit of a step back, as I understand it, what this article, um, especially if we recommend it for adoption, does is commit or suggest that we will commit town resources to acquiring those funds somehow or other. It means staff time, it means staff time, um, and, and, and the likes of that. Is that is that a, a fair description? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it, the nature of a, of, a, uh, of a project like this is complicated, so it's going to require uh, many hands. I'm not going to take public comment yet. Um, so I think the select board has spoken very clearly. Clearly, we're all, we're all in favor of finding a solution to this problem. Um, and then the question is, is this, is this the right path to the solution? Um, I am, I'm very concerned about the idea of, of symbolic votes for <laughs> monetary appropriations, things that, well, we know it doesn't compel us to act, but we think it strengthens our bargaining position or something. Like, I'm very concerned about the precedent that sets. I mean, you could almost say that for, for any random article that, that came up. Um, you could say, well, but we support it. It, it. it doesn't matter because it doesn't compel us to act, but it shows that we strongly support X. So I'm worried about that precedent. 
I'm worried about the idea of, of really kind of authorizing an appropriation, even though it's not compelling an appropriation, but authorizing the uh, appropriation before we have a plan. That's just absolutely backwards from anything that we do. And so again, as a precedent setting thing, um, I have a lot of concern about that. Um, I, I guess I'm not personally sold on the idea that it has to be now. I would feel much better, and, and I completely appreciate the Housing and Sheltering Committee endorsing this approach. This is, you know, th this kind of advocacy is your is your job. I mean, this is this is what you're doing. I think that the select board's role is a little bit different. Um, so we need to be thinking about the larger context of the precedent that that might set. Um, so so I'm not I'm not convinced that there's a difference in the timeliness of supporting this as, as drafted in this motion versus um, you know, speaking strongly in support of finding the solution, continuing to work at the solution, maybe referring this article back to us or to us in Housing and Shelter Committee or whomever to keep working on the solution, and that maybe that appropriation will come in the fall, but the, it, we would have a much stronger case, a much stronger justification that's more consistent with the kind of money that we ask town meeting for, the kinds of plans under which we ask them to appropriate money, than if we do that now. Ms. Stein. I disagree. I think if this would strengthen the bargaining positions, the role that Mr. Musanti has to play, um, I, I am all for being willing to take a symbolic vote, maybe because I know of circumstances with, say, single payer, where we know it's not going to happen tomorrow, next week, or next fall, but we make the vote because we want people to know where we you know, stand for a better way of doing things. And this is... I think a piece of property, a, a building, Echo Village would do a lot for not just the current residents, but for our ho affordable housing stock. And so why not say this is something that we are for and we hope we can get it to work. Um, it's not binding. We know that legally it's not, but at least it states what our best uh, hope would be. Thank you. Mr. Hayden. I, I raised my hand before it was completely formed, but I'm going to try to push on for the sake of time. Um, the, um, so, maybe in response um, to Ms. Stein's comment is, uh, would be um, if this is going to be symbolic, um, I wonder if you would be more comfortable, I certainly know I would be, with um, it speaking more directly to the symbolism, to what we are, um, to what we are going to commit to do. Um, you know, we might commit to it's a nice idea to do this or that or anything else, and that's, that's fine and all symbolic and everything else, but um, what I would want the vote to intend to symbolize, to signal to um, people that we might be in, in negotiating with is, um, you know, what we will do. And that might be, you know, we will ask the town manager to spend time, to spend um, committee time, to spend uh, staff time, to do the work. I mean, the two and a half million dollars or the three million dollars or the 1.75, whatever that number is, it's unlikely that town meeting, even in its best mood, would say, yes, we're just going to put that money on the table. We, we, want, we want you to raise our taxes by that much and get this thing. Um, I'd be much more, careful, much more comfortable saying, you know, that's not the only money that we have available. And we really, in order for this to work, we do need to look for those other things. And that's the thing that I would like to vote on and say yes. Town meeting, you can uh, you can demand that of us. You can take us up on our offer. Um, 
you know, and I understand your precedent, sort of the, the lack of precedence that this sets. So, you know, okay, we need to do it if we'd like or not. And it doesn't allow me to say, this is what I'd like to do. <coughs> this is what I'd like to recommend town meeting do. Okay. I hope that was principle in one way or another. Oh, there's Ms. Brewer. A um, couple of quick things. One is, this. I'm just verifying, this is a two-thirds vote, which is perhaps smart, our biggest <coughs> issue that we're facing here. Uh, one of the things is, in regards to the 15%, basically 15% of 2.5 million, we're looking at 375,000, right? So basically 16,000 units, which would be, as I referred to, I believe was referred to earlier, as a steal, which would certainly be a steal. Um, if it was more than that, however, and not being familiar with as many of the details of the housing production plan as I should be, uh, the the cost per unit at the price of 2.5 million is still only $105,000 a unit, which while that sounds like a lot, really is not a lot. And so I'm feeling like given the numbers and being <coughs> completely, completely aware of the precedent that Ms. O'Keefe states because that was certainly very compelling to me much earlier in this conversation. I feel our, our housing situation is so serious that this is the kind of thing that I can say it's okay to make this kind of vote for this particular purpose. If it was for conservation land, I might have a different answer. But um, for affordable housing units at this point, I, I feel okay about doing it this way. But I totally understand why people might not. Mr. Walsh? Yeah, we're not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, a, a good illustration of the messy nature of government where we have to, you know, it's easy to talk in abstract about the things we want to do and high moral causes, but then we have to put our names on things. We have to think about legal precedent and practical realities and all the rest. So I'm as often torn, and I find that Sarah's arguments very compelling, but I think ultimately I come down close to where Ms. Brewer is. Um, we've been talking so much about the housing problem and the lack of affordable housing, the fact that, as this very document states, uh, the behavior of predatory landlords is destroying our rental market and making it impossible for people to rent apartments and houses on a smaller scale, even. And the question of price is interesting, too, because we probably we brought the Hawthorne property, which some have since renamed Hawthorne Meadows because it sounds nicer, uh, with that decrepit farmhouse and large open space there. And one reason that proved not to be practical for conversion is because the price per unit would have been over three hundred thousand dollars, three fifty, three seventy-five, above the median price. Uh, so, given the amount of money, as Ms. Brewer suggested, that we also spend on other pieces of property, this would seem to be a good investment. In other words, I'm aware of the precedent issue, but I, I'm inclining toward taking action because the housing issue is so important. And if we're going to be leaders, I think we need to lead. Okay. All right. We can talk about this for about five more minutes total because we do need to take positions on the other articles, even though the petitioner is not here. Ms. Streeter. Um, I'm speaking for, for myself rather than a member of the CPA mm -hmm. committee. But while I've been on that committee, I've learned a few things. And, and one of those is that having some positive votes, especially from a local community, does help to gather further funds. We've seen that repeatedly on various CPA proposals. Um, the other thing I'd like to remind the committee that um, about a year or so ago, we voted, I think it was upwards of $74,000 per unit to upgrade um, 22 units throughout town. And that didn't get us a single new unit of comfortable, affordable housing. And then this year on the warrant, there is another CPA article that, again, will be putting a fair amount of money, $110,000 in CPA funds with CPG funds added to that, that, again, will not get us new affordable housing. So I think that when you start to look at what some of the other things are, um, this does look like a bargain. And sometimes when there's a bargain on the table, you have to grab it when you can. Um, the other thing is that I think I have to commend Ms. Petulia for getting as far as she has gotten, given that you're a novice to Amherst politics. And um, that's no easy task to really figure out how things work and, and come up with an article if they want. Um, but I think this is a situation that cries out for um, support and leadership from the select board in a way that I, I'm hoping that perhaps Mr. Musanti or, or the select board could call together 
a meeting maybe of the CPA committee, the select board, the housing committee, the finance committee. I mean, what this is really calling for is a collection of heads together to find a real, realistic and practical way to solve this. And so I think that it's great that it's coming before you, and I think that the whole thought of a symbolic precedent sort of pales in comparison to what could be accomplished by doing this. Uh, I hope you'll vote to support it now and then to work actively over the next few months to really see what we can do. And it, it may well influence the, um, the landowner. Um, it may well influence state grants and, and certainly the CPA committee. Especially if you have a, a good, solid town meeting vote to support this, which is n unlikely to happen unless you give strong support here. Mr. Oldham. I would just like to add that giving town meeting the opportunity early to support this article, which I'm hopeful we will do, uh, I think does strengthen the town manager and your staff uh, when you're speaking with the owners. And I say the owners because there's several individuals and involved in this LLC. There are several people who are potentially profiting through this eviction. And I think that once the town steps up through town meeting and puts up town money and says, we're willing to pay for this, I hope you will invite these individuals who started this whole process in motion to put up some of their money, to invite the owners to give us a bargain sale. I think that uh, the town should say loud and clear that Affordable housing is is an important thing, and um, those who would profit at um, at the expense of, of low income people in our community should be challenged to rethink their their business practices. And I think the town meeting will uh, make it easier for you to say something like that today. Okay. Um, if it's really quick. Yes, I don't think it's going to cause our property taxes to go up because. We support this. I think that if there is a good, solid support from you in town meeting now, um, it's unlikely. That, I mean, it's more likely we'll get the grants that we'll get the CPA funding, and that we won't need to raise property taxes, as, as you indicated, Mr. Hayden. So I, I'm hoping that that is what the message is that is conveyed to people that we're not asking the town to raise their taxes in, in, in any extraordinary way. Okay, Ms. Rutilia. Yes, um, just to kind of piggyback on that, I broke down, um, made another handout and just broke down in terms of the funding. Um, I know we kind of went over it, but just tried to make it look a little clearer, if I can hand up sure. to you guys. Um, but, so, good segue. Um, <laughs> no, um, so I, I, again, I wanted to point out and the potential sources and when we were looking at presenting this, um, we also did not want to ask the town to really look at um, property taxes first and, and foremost, but to look at you know other potential um, sources of loans and, and grant funding and things like that. Um, again, also of course as tenants, um, we feel that the quick action um, with the leadership of the town and and committees. Um, would have definitely an immediate impact for our situation um, and could potentially put the, the legal side of this on, on pause as you know, if there's discussion going on that there may be some willingness to kind of you know, just pause everything else on the other side, which would then give you know, even potentially more time to work things out, but without commitment, without something firm and, and firm in terms of Yes, we are willing to work together. Um, there is no incentive to to pause um, the court action and the legal action in terms of the tenants. Thank you. Um, Ms. Brewer, I, before you ask your question, I want to ask you a question. So <laughs> if you could um, summarize what you think we would be asking town meeting to do. Oh, is this a quiz? Well, I mean, <laughs> so this, is, this is very confusing to me. Like, honestly, I'm not sure what we're asking town meeting, considering the conversation we're having. What, what, how do we describe to town meeting what this vote would be? Well... I'm not sure I'd describe it exactly the same way Mr. Hayden did. I mean, obviously, I would go by the motion language, the motion that we have here, which basically says 
to me what this says is we will explore every means available to us to find a way to purchase an affordable housing restriction on these units. And I would, what I, one of the things, notes I made to myself as to whether or not people might find compelling is that there's always the question as to what town meeting action means and what it compels and what, you know, things get referred and things get suggested and yada, 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 and does anybody actually do those things that town meeting asks for? Um, and it sounds like, from what Mr. Zomek brought up earlier, that town staff was planning to support this effort anyway. So that's one of the things that I think plays into your concern about timing. If, you know, if we had a, a more firm package in the fall, it isn't the town staff's refusing to work on this unless there's a town meeting vote. So um, that, that's a non-issue, so to speak, in that um, town staff will work on it regardless of the town meeting vote because they see it as, as an important priority and, and we haven't said stop, don't do that, and um, if they listen to us anyway. Um, so I guess that's circling back. I just see it as giving, a, giving us all these possibilities and that you will see something in the future. And that yes, it's absolutely different than other things we have done in the past when we usually have a package ready, when we say we'll get this grant and we'll match it with this and if the grant falls through we won't do it after all. Um, and yet again, I'm compelled by the idea of the affordable units. Although I do have a question. Just Okay. Go ahead with your question. So this has been brought up, this or has been alluded to previously, and it's mentioned again on this handout, and I'm really concerned about what this means because of the conversation that might take place at town meeting. So we have CPA articles that are coming up. They're going to be rescheduled to later in town meeting, as I understand it. Is this saying, is the intention of the petitioner to ask on the floor, basically, that CPA recommendations be changed for this town meeting, or is this when fall happens, we will ask them to adjust things. So that's. Ms. Bertilli? Yes. <laughs> um, so the intent was not to ask this on the floor if um, you know, the back. And, and I had a conversation today, and these were printed out um, after, after the conversation I had um, today. But the intent was to have met with, and, and just in unforeseen circumstances, um, on multiple ends, but, you know, the, the meetings uh, <coughs> falling through, but the intent had been to have met with CPA prior to the moment that we're in now. Um, so that's where that was coming from, and not that this would be on the floor saying, well, wait a minute, we're changing the whole way. So those are ongoing discussions, but at this point we don't predict there to be a different set of CPA <coughs> motions than the ones we have predicted for the last couple of weeks based on the CPAC report that we have available okay. to us and all other town meeting members. As we said. Yeah, and that's consistent with uh, my discussions as late as today with the CPA chair, uh, Peter Jessup. That, you know, the nature of, of the Echo Village Apartments project is the kind of project that is likely to have lots of sympathy within the CPA committee uh, as an affordable housing project. That's different than turning over the apple cart right. of, the, of the proposals that are literally on the floor of town meeting. Uh, the beauty about CPA is that it's a recurring revenue and there's, there'll be another cycle starting for next year, the moment after this town meeting votes this year's list of projects. So I think there's a lot of uh, openness and sympathy when there's more of a specific plan ready to come forward, how or if CPA might play part of the part of the solution? I think we actually need to vote on this if, unless people need more information to determine their their Just, vote. Uh, Mr. Hayden, one small piece of information. Yep. Is there anything in this? And maybe I'm asking all the way over to the end of Ms. Brewer. Is there anything in this um, should it come to pass that doesn't require another vote of some sort from? The CPA and town meeting, or town meeting if it's if it's to accept a grant, because we have to um, we have to uh, you know authorize <coughs> that kind of spending through town meeting. I think that's an excellent question. That depends on what funding sources get brought yeah, together. Depends. Right, but are, are there any yeah. of them that would not any of them large enough? And this list, for instance, it has three quarters of a million here and a million there and four hundred thousand there. Any of those that would not require a town meeting vote. I would think it's possible to we could get certain grants that wouldn't have appropriation, that wouldn't require town meeting action. 
That's right. Okay. There's some grant programs. So a, CPA, a CPA appropriation cannot come to the floor of town meeting without being originally a recommendation from the CPA right. committee. That's in the state statute. No, for instance. That source. Right. But if other people wanted to throw money at us, we wouldn't necessarily need town meeting to take additional right. action. But conversely, in order to borrow, in or in, in in order to in order to have an actual firm borrowing plan, we would we expect would. to come down back that's, to town meeting. That's two right. There's not even though this gives us all sorts of authorization, we would not actually float a bond next week based on this right. authorization. Okay, it's no. Sorry, we gotta we gotta move on because we've gotta get this wrapped up because we need to talk about what we're gonna do with the other two articles. So this time. I move that the select board recommend to the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting Article 42, Petition Affordability Restriction Echo Village Apartments. Second. All in favor of further discussion, Mr. Reed. Just quickly, um, I am going to abstain from this because I think that there is a, an article that's very similar to this that would speak more directly and uh, more directly to what I think we think it needs to be done, what town meeting needs to authorize. Okay. Further discussion? Mr. Walton. I, I, I may be reading Mr. Hayden's mind. I know our time is, is late. I was going to ask whether any changes in the wording would enable us all to agree and yet not subvert the desire of the petitioners. Is the problem in the, in the wording acquire an actual action as opposed to, is that where our differences turn? Um, so this to me is a is a good intention mm -hmm. but not yeah. a plan mm -hmm. and I just can't vote for a good intention in okay. these circumstances so, so no I, a, a motion change right now I mean maybe over over weeks if we were to talk about something that was more kind of symbolic or whatever on the, the uh, in the realm that Mr. Hayden had been talking about mm -hmm. before, but I don't think that would satisfy any of your folks' sense of, of wanting to say, yes, we're going to put up money for this. Um, so, so no, I don't think there's a quick motion change that we can do, but thank you. Uh, further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. Nay. So All abstaining. Abstaining. Say, so aye. it's three to one to one. Three to one to one, yes. Who would like to speak to this? Good luck to that person explaining her <laughs> nuanced <laughs> positions here. <laughs> Ms. Brewer, I think it's um, got your name yeah, all over it. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you, you all. Time. Thank you all for your work and your comments and your thoughtfulness on this. And Okay, um, so then the other thing before us are Articles 40 and 41. These are two petition articles. Mr. O'Connor is not here to speak to them. Is anyone here to speak in his stead? Okay. Um, I did speak with Mr. O'Connor about these on Saturday. I had expected him to be here. Um, I, well, let's start with 41, which is easier. 41 is about residential parking, and as we know from the memo from the town manager, and as I know from my experience on the safe and healthy neighborhoods thing, we simply can't do this kind of parking thing through the general bylaws. We wanted to for safe and healthy, and the attorney general's office said, mm, no, can't do that. That's basically trying to get around zoning. So, so I don't know what Mr. O'Connor's position is going to be, but the only the only suggestion that I can make is recommending dismissal on this. I mean, we can oppose it, but it really needs to be dismissed mm -hmm. because there's no such thing as approving it. Mm -hmm. right. um, this is 41. Would just say no. Right. Skip 41. 40. Right, because 41 is easier. So I just wanted to talk okay. about that quickly. That's fine. <laughs> so the act, as a general bylaw, would it go? Would it go to the attorney general from us, or would it just be that eventually, when someone questioned it, the attorney general would say yes? The, if town meeting we passed it as a general bylaw, it would go to the attorney right. general, and the attorney general would say that's a right because it's a different a time frame than zoning. But she, the attorney general, still has to do both. So. Right, and since yes. we've already had essentially a pre-opinion on this concept through the safe and healthy um, yes. proposed bylaw, right. we just know okay. this Same isn't going to fly. So there's no reason to. Yeah, I'm ready to vote. Yeah, okay. makes sense. <laughs> okay, I move that the select board recommend to the May t dismissal. Um, of residential parking at the May 6, 2013 annual town meeting, Article 41. Second, with recommend closer to dismissal. Pardon? 
That's recommend dismissal. That's right. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry okay. if I missed. Just a little bit closer. That's all. I don't want any. All to right. Oh, uh, for the discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 I already wrote down that Miss O'Keefe is speaking to that. So yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. That's you. Yeah. Okay. That's me. <laughs> that's me. Okay. So Article 40. So if you read the um, memo from the town manager. This is a little bit more nuanced. This is basically Mr. O'Connor is, is proposing this instead of the rental regulations. Right. And so I don't know how we could support the rental regulations and support instead just sending some information to tenants. Um, the rental regulations is all about supplying information directly to tenants. My conversation with Mr. O'Connor the other day was um, not only uh, is this information available online, et cetera, um, but the idea of if we don't do the rental registration and permitting, then we wouldn't know who we're sending it to. So his response was, we have 95% of the addresses we think. I said, okay, who's gonna open anything then that just says occupant on right. it? So now you're gonna be mailing out something that people are just gonna toss in the recycling. This is not an effective way to communicate the, the um, what we expect people to need to know about um, about the laws and their rights, Ms. Brewer. Which is such a great segue to the fact it's not an effective way to communicate, which is why we don't follow our own current bylaw. Because our current bylaw says we'll do this. We don't have a good way of doing it, so we don't do it anymore. We haven't done it for several years. And like you say, the information is available online, and UMass Housing Resources has like that much more information, as you well saw, with safe and healthy neighborhoods. But So it isn't that there is no place local to get this information. But our whole point is to do it through a rental mm -hmm. registration by law so it gets to the people who actually need it. So do we think we're ready to take yes. position on this? Okay, Ms. Stein. <laughs> I assume ready. that the select board <laughs> not recommend to the May 6, 2013 <coughs> annual town meeting, Article 40, petition rental housing information. Second. Further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous. And I guess I might as well speak to that one also. Sounds good. All right. Do we have anything else we need to discuss then? Yeah. now? Oh, let me tell you that um, next week uh, we meet on the 20th. Um, I will be looking for us to set our June and summer meeting dates. So if you could email me with any vacation or other plans between now and then. Um, if that is the only thing we need to meet about next Monday, then we will cancel the meeting unless people would prefer to meet because we don't actually critically need to do that on the 20th. But if we are meeting on the 20th, that is what we will do. Um, I will also remind us that um, Wednesday, the Wednesday of this week when we are going to meet because we're going to have an executive session as we mentioned at the beginning, um, on that night, we are going to consider Article 26, the Town Down Strategic Planning, yes. followed by 10 and 11. Those are the two easement articles for uh, Atkins Corner that we had moved, so that's just a reminder. And so Select Board knows uh, tonight, uh, if we get to 25, whether that's tonight or whenever we get to right before we do 25, I'm going to make a procedural motion to consider 45, which is Ms. Greeney's petition right after that, which is something we had discussed previously uh, at this meeting. Um, and she is supportive of doing that because her plan is to simply make amendments to 25 and then move to dismiss 45. So, Ms. And it's also my understanding that the mm -hmm. CPA articles are going to be moved away, so we're very likely to get to 25 tonight. Yes. Since All I right. Written my speech yet? That's important for me. To okay. Know. Anything else Thanks. anybody needs to know? I move to adjourn. Then, without objection, this meeting is adjourned at 6:54 p.m. Please make sure that you sign the warrant before you.